Ko. Hi. Konnichiwa, class. Welcome to another YouTube video. Today, we're doing something a little interesting. This is a new kind of bit that I'm going to have on my channel where I'm going to recommend to you guys dishes that I've tried around the world. I want to sum up these dishes from different countries in a list of 10 different dishes. And today, I'm going to sum up to you guys the top 10 dishes that you have to try when you visit Japan. Make sure you guys subscribe and turn on that notification button so you don't miss a single video that comes out on this channel. As well, leave us a like and comment down below your favorite Japanese dish and let's jump right into it. A little context for you guys who are new to this channel. My name is Tal and I've been traveling around the world for the last four years. I recently finished circumnavigating the globe and through the many countries that I visited around the world, Japan was one that stood out to me as a culinary miracle. First dish that I gotta recommend to you guys, this is number 10 on our list, so the least kind of crazy dish I think I had in Japan is called Kushikatsu. Kushikatsu basically is fried anything. <laughs> it's a really fun dish and a really fun thing to go eat out with friends. And the way that Kushikatsu restaurants work is that you go up to a place, you usually choose what's on the menu, to have fried and then the restaurant owners whoever's cooking will fry that thing for you bring it to you on a plate and at the center of the table in the restaurant they will be to there'll be this big dish with sauce inside this is kind of a sweet soy eel kind of tangy sauce and what you'll do is you'll dip that fried whatever inside of that sauce and eat it all up and a big rule with kushikatsu is you only dip once you're not allowed to dip more than once no double dipping some really cool foods that you should try kushikatsu avocado beef octopus and even mochi and for those of you guys who don't know what mochi is mochi is basically grounded up rice into a sticky kind of gel and when you deep fry that it gets really interesting kushikatsu is a really cool dish because it can pretty much be whatever you want fried and that's what makes it number 10 on our list because it's basic it's simple you could pretty much have it anywhere in the world but the japanese have a cool little twist for it so make sure you try kushikatsu when you visit japan Next dish, number nine on our list. Another kind of basic item, but obviously the Japanese have crafted this into an amazing food. This is gyudon. Now gyudon traditionally comes in a bowl with rice and basically what gyudon is, is, is meat, beef to be exact and kind of a sweet, savory sauce. There are a plethora of restaurants all across Japan that serve this. There's also ones that specialize specifically in gyudon bowls. Some of my favorite spots to visit because they were cheap and delicious were 7-Elevens and Family Marts that sold plastic containers that came prepared with rice and beef steak. And then I was able to add my own vegetables from the refrigerators or eggs that I wanted to right in there and have them microwaved at the certain convenience stores that I was at. You could make it anywhere, but in Japan, you're gonna taste those flavors. You're gonna taste that delicious beef. You're gonna taste that delicious white Japanese rice and you'll be crawling back for more every time guaranteed and that'll make you done our number nine on the list let's jump to number eight number eight a dish that I had some certain expectations with and it blew those out of the water okonomiyaki also known as the savory pancake Wow Okonomiyaki is a dish experience within itself. First of all, the preparation of Okonomiyaki is fun to watch as is. So if you want to experience something truly Japanese, go watch them. And the two best cities in Japan to have Okonomiyaki that kind of contend with each other is Hiroshima and Osaka. There's kind of a nationwide competition on who makes the best Okonomiyaki. And people say Hiroshima is the best place. We didn't have it in Hiroshima, we had it in Osaka, and it was pretty damn delicious. So to break down the dish for what it is, it's basically pancake mix made a little savory with the option to add whatever type of protein, vegetables, and maybe even noodles inside. It's kind of created on a hot griddle and then brought to you on another hot griddle. So it's always hot, that's the best part. You watch the food being prepared in front of you and you get to choose things from like octopus to beef and then certain type of soba noodles that you can throw on top to have cooked inside of the actual pancake mix. And that'll be all cooked up right in front of your eyes until it's hot and fluffy. Okonomiyaki is a very traditional Japanese dish and it's something many Japanese people recommend you try when you're in Japan. So make sure that you don't miss out on Okonomiyaki when you're visiting Japan. And that will be number eight. Let's jump into number seven. Ramen. Oh, ramen. So I didn't have a crazy amount of ramen when I was in Japan, even though it was very delicious, but I'm more of an udon guy, so I stuck to that most of the time in Japan. But the ramen is still mind blowing. Ramen is a noodle soup dish that you get in Japan. It is made with very delicious noodles that are soaking up all of the delicious broth that it's inside of the bowl. There are so many variations of ramen, it would be impossible for me to list them all for you, but most of the variations are pork, 
fish, and then sometimes chicken. The broth flavors are really what are going to make that dish for you. You can always ask for more noodles as well as there's always add-ons to be able to put inside of the soup itself. Things like chicken balls, pork meat, fish, eggs, and vegetables. So there's kind of like an endless list. You can make it and customize it the way you like. That is a really cool thing about ramen. Now another side tip for you when it comes to eating ramen and udon-like dishes, you are allowed to slurp in Japan. You're actually supposed to. Because these soup dishes come so hot, it's very custom for people to just slurp it up, make a kind of sound when they're eating. So if you hear that when you're in a restaurant, people aren't being rude, it's just customs in Japan. So enjoy that while you're there. Let's jump into number six. Takoyaki. Oh, what a dish. This dish varied wildly in every single place that I had it in Japan, but it was hands down one of my favorite dishes I had in Japan. It is such a unique dish that you really can't get anywhere else in the world, and it is so uniquely delicious in Japanese, and there's so many things that come behind the actual context of the food itself, which make it extra special. So let's break it down for you. What is takoyaki? Takoyaki is basically a dough ball with an octopus inside with mayonnaise on top and bonita fish flakes on top of that. Bonita fish flakes, what are they? It's something that's used in a lot of Japanese dishes like okonomiyaki as well. And they're basically these shavings of fish called the bonita fish, also known as the skipjack tuna. And these little flakes are placed on a lot of hot foods in Japan and you kind of see them wave around because they're so thin. The heat kind of makes them move. These are kind of a garnish, but they add an extra little salty fishy flavor on top of many foods, which make it really, really cool. It kind of pops out that flavor. I think the best one that we had was in Osaka, which is where it's known to be the best takoyaki in Japan. It is a dish you cannot miss out on. It is very Japanese and there's always all over Japan, tons of little takoyaki anime characters and little drawings and stuff and cartoon characters of takoyaki so you'll see it all over the place do not miss out on takoyaki and let's jump into our next dish number five on our list udon noodles oh my goodness udon oishi desu udon udon is the best thing i think i had in japan i loved udon it's not at the top of our list because it's so basic and because you can get it around the world and there's different variations but the japanese know how to make udon for the price and for how filling udon is, it's usually the best deal around. A lot of udon restaurants will also give you the option to self-serve yourself sort of tempura snacks on the side. You'll have tempura vegetables that you can throw inside, tempura eggs, tempura shrimp, tempura pork, whatever you want. You usually can just pick them up and toss them inside of your soup. Now what is udon? It's a broth, kind of like ramen, and this could be vegetarian broth or non-vegetarian broth. It really depends. Served with these giant thick udon noodles. Udon noodles absorb a lot of water and they turn into very, very thick, delicious noodles, especially when they're hot. You can grab a bowl for up to 200 yen, which is just around $2 and you can find udon all over the place from convenience stores to the highest of the highest restaurants. There's also tons of different variations of udon just like there is of ramen. Things like miso udon and udon that's a little bit flatter than normal udon. There's tons of variations so I highly recommend you try it when you're out in Japan. And that'll be number five. Let's jump into our fourth dish which is not really a dish but I had to add it on the list because it was one of my favorite things. Tayaki! If you guys watch my vlogs from Japan, which I highly recommend you watch if you haven't seen, we created one of the most fun travel series in Japan I think ever created on YouTube. Tayaki was a giant star in that series. Tayaki are fish-shaped waffles, pretty much. But they're kind of like a blend between a waffle and a pancake. They can be served cold, they can be served hot, and they can be filled with pretty much whatever you want. This is red bean, matcha, custard. We even had sweet potato tayakis. Tayakis also don't have to come in the shape of the fish, even though traditionally are in the shape of a fish. We've seen them in shapes of anime characters, dogs, people, and even Magikarp from Pokemon. My favorite Taiyaki by far, and that one was chocolate flavored. A Taiyaki that I highly recommend for you to try is red bean paste filled Taiyaki. Red bean paste in Japan is a super, super popular thing. It is sweet red beans stuffed inside of this pancake sized fish, and it is, oh, whew. Just the best little snack. You can get that for like a dollar on the side of the road pretty much everywhere. And if you want one that's cold, you can get a custard filled one at pretty much any convenience store. And this was something I ate daily and sometimes multiple times a day. I love the shape. I love the flavor. Let's jump into our next dish. Guys, we're getting close to the end. Number three on our list, Hitsumabushi. This is a dish that took me about a week to learn how to properly say. I couldn't pronounce it. I would say Hatsum. Hitsamubashi, Hitsamabu, Hitsami. I couldn't say Hitsumabushi. Hitsumabushi is a Nagoyan dish, a classic Nagoyan dish from the city of Nagoya. It is served throughout Japan, but it is known as a delicacy in Nagoya. Now, what's so special about Hitsumabushi? Well, it's eel. It's kind of like an eel fillet on rice. It comes in a sort of bento box shape, and you get eel kind of opened up, served with a delicious sweet sauce, and served with really oily rice. These usually come with sets of soup, 
and vegetables on the side and different little spices and stuff. And you have to try it if you're in Nagoya because that dish comes from that city and it is classically known as one of the best Nagoyan dishes around. But that being said, it is one of the most delicious things I think you can have in Japan, especially if you're visiting the city of Nagoya. So make sure you check out Hitsumabushi and let's jump into our second dish. Dish number two, it's gotta be on the list. Ladies and gentlemen, Kobe beef, one of the best things I've tried in my world travels, period. Kobe beef. When I first tried Kobe beef, it was in the town of Kobe itself, and I was skeptical, I'll be honest. I did not believe that Kobe beef would be as delicious as everyone hyped it up. I even had a friend who went to Japan and told me so many good things. He was like, Kobe beef is the most delicious thing in the world. You're gonna love it, you're gonna... And I just, I was skeptical. Now, what is Kobe beef, you might ask? Well, it's kind of a breed of cow that is famous to Japan, highly sought after, that pretty much, they don't move around, they're fed beer, and they listen to like jazz music their whole life. And the meat is massaged. So basically what is created is meat that is marbled between fat and muscle. And so when you have it, it's supposed to just melt in your mouth. When I ate it, I went to a restaurant that pretty much let me cook it myself so I could choose kind of the rarity that I wanted of the meat if I wanted it well done or not done at all. And when it came down to it, my first bite of Kobe beef, I was underwhelmed. And I just said, uh, I don't think it's the best beef I had. And then once I ate it again and again, and I slowly started realizing the textures of the beef melting in my mouth, I realized this is truly something special. It is unlike any meat I've ever had, and I guarantee it's unlike any meat you've ever had if you haven't tried it before. So do not pass up on the opportunity to try Kobe beef, but make sure you are trying the legitimate one. Don't get ripped off and get some delicious Kobe beef. And let's jump into the number one dish that you have to try in Japan. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, this is a dish that I have to be a little bit biased about because it really changed my life. My entire life, I've loved eating sushi, but I've never been able to eat raw fish. No matter where I've gone, no matter where I've traveled, I've never been able to bring myself to eat a sort of raw fish dish, raw fish sushi, until I visited Japan. When I went to Japan, I started trying out the different raw fishes that I wanted with sushi, and the sushi was just mind blowing. The quality of the fish and the dedication from sushi chefs around Japan to make sure that the sushi is as precise and as delicious and as fresh as it possibly can be, is mind blowing. They take so much hard work and dedication to make sure that their sushi is delicious and they have pride in it. We had sushi that was as expensive as $10 for a roll and as cheap as 70 cents for two pieces. So we've had a varied amount of sushi and we ate a lot of it. I highly, highly recommend if you were scared of raw fish like I was, make sure you start tasting it when you're in Japan and I assure you by the end of your trip, you'll open up to it. So arigatou gozaimasu Japan, cause you, changed my life when it came to sushi. And that's our roundup of the top 10 dishes you need to try when you go to Japan. Guys, for real, trust me when I say this, Japanese food is incredible. You can trust that I know what I'm talking about because I traveled through Japan for a month and a half and I visited a lot of the major cities and some of the rural areas and this is kind of the best roundup. But I want to hit you guys up with some bonuses just in case. So make sure you write these down because it's going to be a quick fire one. So some little dishes and snacks that I want you to try if you go to Japan are one, mochi. Like we mentioned earlier, this is a pounded up rice ball that turns into jelly filled with anything from red bean to sweet potato, usually red bean. You can get this anywhere across Japan, but see if you can have it fresh. Snacks from convenience stores. These are pretty much anything you can find in a convenience store from melon pan to a soba sandwich. Yes, a sandwich with noodles inside. There's some crazy stuff in Japan, so make sure you go to convenience stores and spend as much of your money as you can just buying snacks that you're questioning. A matcha latte. A matcha latte is pretty much green tea powder mixed into a latte format with milk and sugar, and it is a really, really delicious little drink to have, especially if it's cold outside. It's one of my favorite things to use to warm up. KFC. Kentucky Fried Chicken in Japan is amazing, and Japanese pride themselves on making really, really good fried chicken. It is a huge cultural thing in Japan as well to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken, so don't miss out on it. It is an experience within itself. Yakitori. These are different pieces of meat skewered and you can buy them anywhere they're kind of like barbecued pieces of meat and finally yakiniku yakiniku is just known as japanese barbecue these are open kind of grill restaurants where you just get your own meat and you can barbecue anywhere on it this is less of a dish and more of a type of food that you can eat in japan more of a culinary experience so make sure that you don't miss out on it yakiniku is definitely something you want to try and that guys is going to be the end of this Japanese food video. Top 10 Japanese dishes you need to try when you visit Japan. I hope you guys learned a little something from this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will leave down below the playlist to my entire Japan series, especially the food videos. I think you guys are really going to enjoy those if you're a foodie. And hey, if you know Japanese dishes that I missed in this video, make sure you comment them down below so other viewers who come by this video can check those out as well. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and turn that notification button on because I make videos here every single week. And you do not want, and you do not want to miss any of my upcoming travel videos, especially if you're into food. Also, feel free to follow me on social media. And if you want to join my Patreon family, links to that will be down in the description below. And we will see you guys next time in our next video. I love you long time. A goodbye, class.